That could be it. That could be it. Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order. Uh, Monday, the 14th, 17th. Three days behind. Snow does something for you. Still down. Still down. That's a good, good reason. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you that are here with us, with us this evening. And uh, if we could just take a moment for silent meditation, please. Thank you. I would like to ask Councilman Davis to in the pledge. Ask the clerk if she would uh, call the roll, please. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Council Member Brown. Council Member. Good. It's been proper to move and second, Madam Clerk. Will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Council Member Katati. Yes. Council Member Davis. Yes. Council Member Moffitt. Yes. And Council Member Shore. We have one item uh, ceremonial that we're going to do, but I don't see members of the team here. Is that correct? Is anyone here from Southern High School? Uh, if not, we'll move on and recognize them at the appropriate time. But we do have a proclamation for, for uh, congratulating them on winning the state championship in their class of football. Uh, we. We'll then ask for any announcements by the council. Recognize the mayor pro tem. Yes, and good council evening. Marks. I'd like to announce that the human relations um, division is sponsoring a human rights uh, awards event on Friday evening, I think at 6 o'clock at Haytai. Heritage Center, and I mentioned that because I think I was one of the nominees for an award. So come out and and pray that I get it. Very nice, Councilman Martin. First of all, Mr. Mayor, I did see some people come in that might have been the people you were looking for. No, okay. This, uh, I might want to take just a moment. I know I speak for everybody up here in, in appreciating all of the public employees, uh, city employees who worked so hard over the last few days. Some of them um, are obvious public works, of course, the people driving the plows, sanding the roads, and they're out working long into the night. Uh, we have 45 trucks equipped with plows now, I think is the number, and uh, they were working and they were out. But there are also other people. Um, we know that uh, the police went from car to car uh, all those abandoned cars to make sure that no one was um, was trapped in one of them. And of course, uh, any of our first responders, um, like the fire department, worked hard. Solid Waste worked all day Saturday to catch up on, on work that they couldn't do during the week. And some of them have uh, second jobs and they were able to come in all but one person. But also there are other services, general services, you know, clear sidewalks, does other work. And fleet management are the people behind the scenes. when. Public Works is out working 24-7. Fleet management is on the job 24-7. They're the guys that are making sure, the people, making sure that the trucks are running uh, continuously. So um, I'm sure I left off a lot of people who were working hard, and for that I apologize, but I did want to make sure that we appreciate um, all of our hardworking employees. Thank you. Any other? Comments, announcements. If not, recognize. The seat. I'm sorry, the mayor pro tem. I I think um, <clears throat> at some juncture we need to look at the policy uh, that deals with uh, snow and employees uh, coming to work at some point. So, Mr. Manager, if we could look at that. Thank you. 
Okay, we recognize the city manager for priority items. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. No priority items. Likewise, the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for the mayor and council, uh, agenda item number three, roadside solicitation. There is a, a small revision that we need to make, and this relates to a conversation that came out of the work session uh, related to the uh, one-way streets and being able to to solicit um, in a situation on a, on a one-way street uh, from the driver's side as opposed to going around to the passenger side on the left side of that one-way street. Um, we are still in the process of making that, that adjustment, so you've got a couple of options uh, at your pleasure. You can refer item three back uh, to the city attorney's office and we'll have it back for you uh, for your work session on Thursday or you can go ahead forward with the item and then we'll have an amendment uh, to the item for you on Thursday uh, as well. Regardless, this item won't be in effect until 30 days after it's passed, uh, so it's not gonna go into effect uh, tonight. Uh, it'll go into effect essentially next month. I'll leave it up to the pleasure of the council. Recognize the mayor pro tem. Uh, Mr. Attorney, on that note, I had talked with uh, Richard about um, the impact on residential areas. He said he could not find anything, but I did. And so if you could refer it back to uh, uh, until Thursday, I would appreciate it because I'd like for council to hear what they are doing in Springfield, Missouri in terms of protecting people um, who live um, close to uh, streets where folk are soliciting being intimidated I'd like to make a motion that we before, before we okay. before we do that I want to find out if any more comments from the council people then I want to find out <coughs> if there's anyone here in the public that have come out specifically for this item because uh, if they are I'd like them She's to all right then I, 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 I let's go ahead and hear the item with the intent of holding it to Thursday but also hear the comments that um, the public might have had since they came out here tonight any, any other comments if not, let's recognize the city clerk for any prior times. No items, Mr. Mayor. That being the case, I will uh, read the, each item on the agenda. If it's a consent agenda item, if a member of the council uh, asks to have it removed with someone in the public, we'll do so and uh, speak to that item at the end of the meeting. Uh, on the city clerk's office, these are all consent agenda items. Item one, approval of city council minutes. Item two, Durham City County Appearance Commission appointments. <coughs> Item three, Durham Open Space and Trail Commission appointment. He has the That's wrong. That's the work session. Yeah. Okay. Pull up the wrong agenda. Those things happen, don't they? Okay. All right, we're, we're back back on the track now. Um, item one, approval of city council minutes. On the finance department, item two, bid report for December 2013. On the departmental items, on the city manager's office, item three, roadside solicitation. On the technology solutions department, item four, ESRI software ma maintenance service agreement. On the department of transportation, item five, ground lease agreement between CGPI Cheapest. No, let's just keep. Yeah. Item two bid report December 2013. Item three. This, this is the Item three roadside solicitation, and we'll hear that item. Item four ESRI software maintenance service agreement. Item five is an item that can be found on the general business agenda. Item six is bid award for Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway and Archdale Drive traffic signal installation and communications ca cable installation. Item seven is agreement with North Carolina Department of Transportation for section 5303 Metropolitan Planning Program Grant. Item eight is agreement between Civic uh, Software and the City of Durham for the redevelopment of the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough Metropolitan Planning Organization website. Item nine is North Durham Water Reclamation Facility roof replacement. 
item 13 through 14 items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings and I pull item 3 on the general business agenda item 5 ground lease agreement between CP GPI Regency Irwin and the city of Durham I'm going to pull that item I would ask the city so, administration to speak to that oh sorry yeah I was going to move the consent agenda Three, three and five, we want to pull. Yes, uh, the consent agenda, less items three and five. Exactly. Approval of the consent agenda item with exception of three. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. So we're now back to the roadside solicitation and I would recognize persons that came out to speak on that item. If, 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 do, you, do you want to speak on that item? Not, not just you, Ms. Peterson, young lady. Yes, ma'am. Do you want, if, do, no. ma'am, do you want to speak on that item? No. Well, we can get your card after you finish speaking if you come to the podium. If you could just state your name and address, please. My name is Carolyn Schultz. Uh, I'm with Open we, Table Ministry. Thank you. You have three minutes. I, I did not prepare a statement for today, but I would like to remind all of you kind people that uh, this has been uh, established for a year, and there are many folks that are really suffering as a result of this ordinance. We have asked and argued and prepared and studied and spent time with the HSAC subcommittee and prepared an alternative and you all have worked on uh, changing, uh, adjusting that ordinance and I, I'm just really concerned about the postponing and postponing and postponing. After a year it would seem that we'd be able to come to some sort of consensus and be able to show some mercy to those folks that depend on begging in order for their sustenance. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Peterson. I'm Mrs. Peterson, Victoria Peterson, and um, I understand that um, there are many persons in our, in our community um, uh, that may live below the poverty level and they use various means of raising their funds. But I have a real problem about persons standing on the corners soliciting monies. And please don't take this the wrong way, but I just have to be honest and real. One of the problems that I see, for whatever reason, that a lot of this is going on in the black community, over by Alston Avenue, Fayetteville Street, and Roxborough Road. I would like to know, why is it that we are allowing so many persons to solicit in one area? Now, I don't get to go all over Durham every day, but I do go over on uh, where the old South, uh, uh, South Square, uh, way down Fairville Street, uh, what's that new mall out there? Um, way out on, on Fairville Street, um, over by 54. Uh, I've been way out there on going towards North Roxboro. I do not see people on the side of the corners begging for money. I see a lot of these folks in the African-American community, and particularly in our business community, over here by Fayetteville Street and Roxborough Road, why is it that we have to have so many of them? Matter of fact, one Saturday, Mr. Mayor and city council members, there were so many of them, I actually had to call the police, because it was just so many of them out there begging. It's hard enough to get folks to come into the African-American community to do business with our own people. 
But when you have so many people on the corners in these same communities, business districts, in the African American community, asking for help, and a lot of people will bypass those communities. Those businesses are being hurt by the panhandlers. And I think before the city gives any more of those solicitation letters out, somebody needs to sit down and talk to those individuals and find out what, what is your need? What is it that you really need? Do you need a job? Then I think we need to try to help them get employment. We have people now who stand out and beg for their dogs. It doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm not against them. I just have a concern what I see going on in the African American business district. Austin Avenue, Fayetteville Street, and Roxborough Road. You have so many of them, particularly on the weekends, that's panhandling, that we need to try to put a little stop to it. So I don't know what the city council can do about that, about how many you have in the area, but please consider that. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Thank Mayor. you, Ms. Peterson. Uh, let's, let's move to item that I wanted to pull five. And what, what I like is the administration to explain to me really what is the parking meter system that we're gonna have on, on that line. I'm sorry, what was the question again? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, can I make a com uh, comment on item three? The one we just talked about. Sure. Would you mind, Fine. real quickly? Um, I just, I hope also that we will, once we get this back on Thursday, that we can go ahead and, and get this moving because I agree with Carolyn. It has been a long time and uh, I know the reasons. There are a lot of good reasons. There have been a lot of people involved in the conversation and uh, I mean, it's involved our police department. It's involved our, our uh, city attorney's office. It's involved a lot of people and I think we've, there's been a lot of work to bring it to a consensus and uh, I know that uh, Mayor Pro Tem has some uh, concerns, and I know that uh, City Attorney's Office has a has a concern. But I hope that we can go ahead and whatever the concerns are, let's go ahead and try to address them and, and move it forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. I, uh, Carolyn stated that uh, we've been working on this over a year, and the people are still suffering. What I find so sad is that in one year, they have not moved anywhere. Well, you're out of order, just, just you may be seated. We have the, some of the same people out there who are not getting resources. My understanding is there are people who want them to be able to solicit so it will make them feel better. I heard a woman say, it makes me feel good when I can give somebody a dollar. Or another guy, I want to make sure, I want to be able to give somebody some money so I can feel good about them getting a cup of coffee. It ain't about, excuse my grammar, it ain't about us. It's about trying to transform the lives of people. And I've often wondered, how do they do it in Apex? I know that's where you live, but you don't have to answer that today, but I think it's sad that we are still unable to end this when there are other places in this country that are. And that's something we'll have to address at, at some point to see what we're doing. We might need to just try something different. I, I'm, I'm, we're through with this until our meeting uh, Thursday. Uh, I, I have some personal concerns about persons advocating for things that happen in our city that don't live in our city, but that's, that's another point. Um, I, I'm going to ask if the administration will speak to the point about what type of meter system are we going to have being proposed for the parking lot on 9th, 9th Street. You have a question? Uh, that's, that's correct. I move. I move that we move item three to Thursday. It's been proper to move a second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Yes. Close the vote. It passes six to zero. All right, Mark, we'll get to you now. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Mark Aronson, Transportation Department. 
Um, what you have before you is the ground lease agreement for a parking lot on 9th Street and an ordinance to actually impose uh, parking fees to park in that ordinance. This was discussed at your work session last Thursday. There were some concerns raised at that time. The ordinance that was presented was to be effective March 1st with uh, lease pay uh, payments to begin at that time and charges to park in the lot to begin at that time. There were some questions raised about making improvements to the lot before we actually began to pay the lease payments and to begin charging and pursuant to discussions with the land, the property owner, uh, they're willing to delay the, uh, the commencement of the lease payments to June 1st, three months. The lease would actually be effective March 1st, but payments would not begin until June 1st, and that's when the ordinance to uh, charge would also become effective on June 1st, $1. And I will note, I'm not sure the ordinance that you have may still refer to March 1st, but it is to be June 1st. That, that would be the recommendation. There were a few other concerns that were raised regarding employee parking uh, on possibly on 9th Street, some uh, comments regarding Alley 8 connecting Iredale to 9th Street, and then the uh, a grant program for uh, uh, 9th Street business owners. Those are addressed in the memo and we'll continue to work with the merchants on employee parking. Uh, I think we're, the, the managers were continuing to work with Duke University on uh, a timeline and plan for improvements to Alley 8, and OEWD is bringing forth some recommendations on the grant program at your meeting in April. Is, is the landlord actually paying have the milling done, or is he just doing no. it, we're paying for it? It's not just we, we were originally planning to pay for it within the first 12 months. We're still planning to pay for that, but they're going to do the work. So I and guess the question is, does that have to go out for a contract by the city, it goes out of contract by the developer? Who's, who's putting the contract out for that work? Uh, the developer will do that. Okay, so the developer is paying for the, the milling The developer's paying milling, and resurfacing, and striping, and striping okay. not to exceed $30,000. Okay. All right, now my question goes back to what type of meters are we actually going to install on the parking lot? This would be a, similar to a pay station. It's not meters, it's a pay station. Uh, the spaces would be numbered and people would pay in accordance with the pay space in which their vehicle is occupying. Uh, they can pay by coin, by uh, 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 currency, or credit card, and it does have cell phone capability. So, and I guess I'm trying to get back to Councilman Schultz comment about people being able to extend their time extend remotely. time by yes that that the, the state the pay station will be have that capability okay all right well that's all i don't have any further questions i just want clarification on that i'm glad to see you were able to get the three month free time let the developer do his work and uh, before we begin i entertain a motion on the item move the item oh you had a question okay I recognize Councilman Moffitt. Thank you. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> for, I wanted to ask in the supplemental memo, um, one of the things that is in the memo is it says the city will work with 9th Street merchants, and I, I want to be certain that when we're thinking 9th Street merchants, we're thinking all the merchants in this zone, right? Perry, Iredale. I mean, there's, you know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of employees. Okay, so that's the yeah. first thing. Second thing, um, in the, one of the things that, Tom Campbell, who's one of those merchants, asked, and he listed out several parking areas over there that he thought might be available. When, in the memo, when it says that you'll work with Ninth Street merchants on ways to address employee parking concerns, I assume that those potential parking areas will be on the table at that time. Is that right? They're not addressed individually in the memo, but they're sort of... That's correct. I mean, okay. they're... We don't know what all the options are yet, but we'll oh. explore whatever's on the table. Okay. Yes. And can we get um, somewhere in here either a, a, a status report in um, either in the 90 days or 45 days just so we can see how this is progressing? Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Recognize, welcome. Recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I appreciate it very much the uh, responsiveness uh, that you all um, uh, uh, showed to this to the concerns that we had raised at the council meeting mark I thought that your memo covered uh, a lot of the in, in fact I thought all of the issues that the merchants had raised 
since then in that new memo we had received from them, I thought you did a good job of addressing them. And um, I had the same question that Don did about the multiple parking lots and so forth, but I, sure. I understand your answer and I think it makes a lot of sense. I also want to say I appreciated the mayor suggesting last Thursday that we get the, um, that we try to get the developer to uh, give us a, a break on that. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe the developer's here and we might want to say to him, we appreciated that. I think that's a, a, a goodwill gesture and, uh, and I, I don't think it'll go uh, every way to assuaging the fears of the uh, nine street merchants about this parking, but it's certainly much appreciated. And, um, but I, I just thought that you all did a, a really good job of, of trying to address these concerns in the memo. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Shul. Any other comments? Uh, I'll entertain a motion on the item. It's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Under the General Business Agenda, public hearings, item 13, Durham, Marsville, Annexation Agreement. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, first, I can certify for the record that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with law, and uh, we have affidavits on file with the Planning Department to that effect. Uh, the item before you is a requested revision to the 1997 Annexation Agreement between the City of Durham and the Town of Morrisville. Uh, the agreement covers the southeastern Durham County and northwestern Wake County area where the municipal boundaries of Durham and Morrisville meet. The requested change to the agreement would remove approximately seven acres of property currently within the city of Durham's annexation area and place that same property in the town of Morrisville's annexation area. Uh, the property is known as the O'Brien property and it's part of a larger development proposal located in Wake County and in the existing town limits of Morrisville. Um, the city staff has evaluated this, the requested revision and determined that the property in question would be uh, costly and difficult to serve with City of Durham Municipal Services. Um, the reason for that is that the only direct access to the parcel would be through the town of Morrisville, uh, unless there was a extension of uh, distribution drive, which would involve a crossing of a stream buffer, which uh, is costly and, and could have environmental impacts. Uh, the proposed amended agreement has been reviewed by the Departments of Water Management, uh, Public Works and Finance, and no detrimental impacts were identified to the long-term interests of the city. Uh, staff recommends approval of the revised agreement effective April 1st, 2014. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. I'll ask first of the questions by members of the council. If not, we have one person who signed up to speak on this item. Uh, before I recognize him, is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? Because I only have one person that wanted to sign up. I'll let the record reflect that. I recognize Patrick Biker, and you have five minutes. Take a lot less than that, Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Bell, members of council, my name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group in Durham. I'm here tonight representing KCR Developers LLC, which is a developer of the Kitts Creek neighborhood in Morrisville that's directly adjacent uh, to the city limits of Durham. I thought the staff report was uh, very clear, and I want to just say how much we appreciate the efforts of the planning department and the administration to bring this item forward, and I'll be happy to try and answer any questions that you all may have. Thank you very much for your time tonight. You're welcome. You heard the developer representative. Does anyone have questions on this item? I recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, this is actually not for you, pa uh, Patrick. Oh. It's for staff, which is um, I know that we have other situations like this where we um, have, I guess, the town of Chapel Hill has territory in Durham. Um, what are the implications of this for uh, any possible future city county merger? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I can fully address that. As you alluded to, there are areas within uh, the town of Chapel Hill that are in Durham County. There is a small area already of the uh, city of Raleigh that's in Durham County um, and, and Morrisville. There already are, again, very small portions of Morrisville within Durham County. Um, I think if there were to be a future merger of Durham City and Durham County, that would have to be part of the negotiations. I don't think m those communities would not be subject unless they participated in that merger. Um, yeah, all right. I guess I need to ask more about that offline, but thank you very much, Pat. Any other questions by members of the council? 
If not, let the record reflect that no one else wanted to speak on this item, this item being a public hearing. I declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, the last item on the agenda is item 14, consolidated annexation item, Farrington Road Baptist Church. Good evening again, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, thank you. This is a voluntary annexation, utility extension, and initial zoning request submitted uh, by Farrington Road Baptist Church. Uh, the applicants are requesting annexation of approximately eight acres of property located at 6804 Farrington Road. Uh, the initial zoning designation request is for the rural residential or RR zoning. This is the same uh, zoning designation as the property currently has within the county's jurisdiction. Uh, the zoning designation uh, would allow the, um, the uh, church to seek a minor special use permit uh, which would be required uh, to be granted by the Board of Adjustment before any development as a place of worship could occur for an approximately 24,000 square foot uh, place of worship on this site. Utility impact an analysis was performed by the Public Works Department and uh, they determined that utility service in the area is adequate uh, to serve the proposed development. A fiscal impact analysis was performed by the Budget Management Services Department and indicated that the uh, development would be revenue positive. Uh, staff recommends approval of this request, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks. You've heard the staff report. Let me ask other questions by members of the council. If not, I, I don't have anyone that is signed up to speak on this item. I would ask, does anyone want to speak on this item? You don't have to. I let the record reflect no one. Do you care to speak? I'm Tom Stark. Um, represent some of the parties involved in doing this um, um, annexation. Um, I think the staff report pretty much sets it out. This is where Farrington Road Baptist Church is simply moving south across 54 and just the other side of the entrance to Falcon Bridge. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Phil Cook is the engineer that laid it all out. He's here to answer any questions. If you all have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, are there questions of the developer? I can ask Councilman Shule. Um, so uh, for our staff, the attachment three, uh, the cost benefit analysis, explain to me, so this is a church, how do you, how do we calculate sales tax and other revenues as, you know, when I look at the, the cost, the cost benefit, I see various sources of revenue and I just don't understand exactly how we make that calculation. Sure, uh, Councilman Shul, as you'll see from the chart that you referred to, the um, property taxes were removed because of the tax exempt status of a, of a place of worship. The other categories uh, of uh, revenue, such as the utility fund, uh, were generated by the Budget Management Services Department based on a uh, pro rata share or pro rata estimate of the generation rate of similar types of uses. I don't, I don't know that the model was calibrated for the fact that this is a relocated use rather than a new use, and I don't know how well it was calibrated for a, ch a place of worship or a church relative to other types of non-residential uses. I certainly can have um, a Berth Johnson or John Allure or someone follow up w with, with us on that to, to get a more detailed answer. That's the best I can do standing here right now. Sure, thank you. Um, it's not certainly not something I would want to hold this up for or anything, but I, I, um, it just seems... I, I, I guess I would be interested at some point, I mean, maybe there are not enough churches in the county to, or in the city to warrant a calculation for that, but it does seem like a lot of sales tax to be generated by a church. I, I could be wrong, but um, it, it did strike me as a lot of revenue uh, for, uh, uh, to be generated that way. I, I, it's just something I would raise for the future. Thank you. We'll certainly review that. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? If not, I'll try to put in be closed. The matter's back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, let me ask, are there any other items to come before the council? Hearing none, the council's adjourned at 7.34 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>